greetings royals hello greetings 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 happy sunday royal family how are the royals doing today we are live Happy Sunday. We are live and ready for the word royals. Hello. How are we all doing today? I trust we're all doing great. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is Rati Shalom. We are live and ready for the word royals. Ready to share the word of God. We started early today we came like 17 minutes earlier uh, because we also want to finish on time and make sure that we don't have problem with network as well as you know any power problem and so on so i thought let's come early and um you know share the word of god early because there's something very special that we're going to learn today. How is everyone doing? How are the royals doing? Hope you had a blessed week. Hope you took church. You won. You conquered. Like we always do, right? And I also hope that you have so much great testimonies and blessings, you know, to obviously be grateful to god for royals you know we always show gratitude to our heavenly father because that is very important for us to do we show our gratitude you know we show gratitude to our heavenly father we thank god for the week that we had we thank god for blessings we thank god for our families we thank god for his word that is working in our lives we thank god for the teachings we thank god for there's so much to be grateful to god for royals so right now i would like us to take this time to just thank our heavenly father and honor him with so much blessings let's just thank him Thank him for your blessings. Thank him for your week. Thank him for your family. Thank him for divine health. Thank him for peace. Thank him for love. Thank him for, you know, sharpening your life. There's so much. So let us just thank him. Father, we thank you. We are grateful to you, O oh God. We are grateful for your, for the blessings that you bless us with. We are grateful to you, O oh God. Yes, for loving us so dearly. We thank you for your word that is prevailing in our lives. We are grateful to you, O oh God, for this great week that we had. We are grateful for our families. We are grateful for love, for unity. We are grateful to you, O oh God, for restorations of uh, restoration of times and years and seasons in the name of our Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you for blessing us. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, for changing us through your word we thank you for ministering to us in a special way we are grateful to you oh god for loving us so dearly we are grateful living this moment oh god as we share the word we are ready to receive yes to learn and grow in the name of jesus father we thank you thank you for this opportunity thank you for this platform thank you father we are grateful to you for all the blessings we are grateful for our families and all greatness that we receive on daily blessings father we thank you in jesus name we pray amen glory to god all right so this is another beautiful sunday royals a beautiful sunday indeed for more insights of god's word like you all know every sunday you know the spirit of god guides us and we share the word of god you know and we learn so much from the word right so last week we also had a beautiful uh time in the presence of god learning about eyes of the spirit i hope you did enjoy the uh the message i hope you learned a lot from the message and you can watch it on our youtube channel it's available on our youtube channel so you can actually listen to the message anytime you know at your free time anywhere 
right <laughs> that is why we have uh fountain insights tv youtube channel so you can actually go to our youtube channel and listen to as many messages as you want and messages that will truly bless you and inspire you so we learned a lot on eyes of the spirit you know how god wants us to see with the eyes of the spirit how he wants us to hear with the ears of the spirit and how he wants us to design you know that is very important so if you are that kind of person who are not attentive to the spirit of god who doesn't even listen doesn't even care doesn't even hear then you cannot understand what we are sharing so for you to learn more you ought to be attentive to the spirit of god there's a message that we want shared is available on our youtube channel uh, uh uh be attentive it's a very powerful message as well right so now learning about eyes of the spirit you know how we ought to see with the eyes of the spirit how we ought to design and so on and now this week by the spirit of god you know god has been communicating you know into my spirit through the scriptures and also you know through prayer that we ought to work on our character you know i took some time to pray like i always do you know my time off to pray and the spirit of god i had the voice of god very loud and clear you know talking about our character talking about the character how we ought to you know work on our character shape our characters you know change the way we do things and we will listen we will read this we will take the scriptures before long you know so the title of the message is character so we're going to learn about character and when we talk about character we're talking about your personality we're talking about you know um let's see you know we're talking we're now we're talking about your character i'm trying to look at my notes you know we talk about your characteristics you know we're talking about your personality you know we're talking about you know things like how honest you are how transparent you are how loving you are how pure you are how you think you know all those kind of things like the the all these have to do with your character what kind of a person are you you know how do you handle things and how is your character like even to god how is your character like to people how is your personality you know we talk about uh the word of god every now and then right we go to church we pray we share the word we talk to people we get angry at some point you know and on all those things so what what will be happening to you when you are going through all this kind of things in your life so now we're talking about your character we're talking about your personality here we're talking about how you are as a person how you are now the spirit of god communicated with me in regards to this topic on character you know and i was like oh god this is so true and throughout this whole week we had a beautiful amazing bible study with the ladies that i do bible study with you know every single day and we were studying the book of james wow and we learned a lot also from the book of james and throughout the whole week the spirit of god kept on talk, talking ministering and saying character your character you know and i said okay god we need to work on our character when so that means we need to reshape our characters we need to check ourselves assess ourselves possibly need to examine yourself so we need to examine ourselves and see we may be asking ourselves i have been praying god i pray every day i go to church every day god i'm doing the thing that you told me i should do I fast. I give. You know, I do all the things that you told me to do. Yes, you are doing 
all the things you do uh, confessions you do affirmations you do declarations you know that you speak all those things you tell yourself i'm holy oh god you know i am your child i understand the knowledge of god i have the wisdom of god i know what to do you know we speak all those kind of things we speak all those words we confess we do you know we we, we speak we pray but now in doing all those things the message is on we have started already so in doing all those things and then you still have a question like god how come this and this hasn't happened in my life how come this 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 is not happening how come i'm not seeing a change there how come i'm not you know god why is why are these things like this why am i why are you blessing others and i'm not receiving my blessings oh god why am i always having conflicts with people why this why that why that now we're going to look at the scriptures that we will share, that we will read, that will teach us about character. Now we're talking about all those things we confess, we do all, but our character. Now what does the Bible say? We will look at the scriptures. There are many of the scriptures I'm hoping we'll be able, able to take them. Let me start with the scriptures right away on character. Now let's go to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 18. Okay. So we're learning about character. It's so amazing that we go to church, we pray, we do all sorts, but we are angry. We are bitter. We have people that we don't like. We have people that we are mean to. We have a way we deal with people that is not that doesn't please God. We don't forgive, even though we are Christians. You know, we 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 gossip. We say all kinds of things. We talk bad about others. We badmouth others. You know, we vow all kinds of things that this one will not make it. This one, this this. One. But we are Christians. We are God's children. That's what we call ourselves. But there are things that we do and they're not in line with the word of God. If we say we are like Jesus, if we say God is in us and we are in him, if we say we have the mind of Christ, we say that we are like our heavenly father, we are created in his image, but we do not have the character of God, then we haven't started. Because if you say you are like God, you are of God, you are a child of God, you are born of God, you know, and you say Jesus Christ is your, is your Lord and personal Savior, but you do not do like Jesus. You're not living here on earth like your Lord Jesus Christ. You do not love like Jesus loved. You don't care like Jesus cared. You don't judge like Jesus judges. You, you, you bad mouth people, you talk anyhow, your character is not even lack of Jesus. But you say you are a child of God. Things that are in you, you've got heavy things in your heart that are hurting you, that, are, that make you bitter, you know, and you don't talk about them. You are not uh, transparent, you are not open, you don't open up, you don't talk to people. If you have something that you don't like, you don't open up and talk about it to resolve it and, and make peace. But you say you are a child of God. Which God are you representing? Which Lord Jesus uh, footsteps are you walking on if you are not like your Lord Jesus Christ? So now let's look at the scriptures that will help us to understand. It's character, so it's the, the message is very, it's about us, about us working on our character, you know. We cannot be going to church, doing all the activities that we do in church, but we have bad characters. Bad character towards other people, bad character towards God, bad character even towards our own, our, ourselves. So we need to work on ourselves, work on your mind. Work on your heart. Work on your behavior. You know, let's look at it. 
Matthew 18, at that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child to him and blessed the child among them. And he said, truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in, in my name, welcomes me he says let's see he says that unless you change and become like a little children unless you change and become like little children you know we are uh like they are matured creatures those who say no and i've been in in church for a long time for such and such years i've been born again for such such years you know there are things that you feel like i can't do anymore or i don't need to do and and, and so on but you are a, you are a child of god he says that unless unless you change and become like a little children so that, well, how do little children behave do you know, if, if you're a parent, you know, you can beat your child now, correct your child now, fight with your child now, you know, st uh, rebuke your child. He or she will be angry at that time. Then after, she, she will be back, she will back to normal. And then say, mommy, she's calling you or he's calling you mommy this. Mommy. He forgets that he fought with you. He forgets, he forgets that you shot at him, you know, or you shot at her. But we... As adults, we are not like that. If somebody says something to you, you know, speaks some words to you, maybe words that are correcting you, or maybe words that are trying to show you, what do you do? You get angry, you get bitter, you 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 change your attitude, your behavior towards that person. The next thing you don't talk to that person, the next thing you the next thing you are enemies, you don't love each other. But if you are like a child. You will understand when you're being corrected, you will handle things differently. And even when the word of God itself is correcting you, there's a way you will receive the word and there's a way you will allow yourself to be corrected in a way that doesn't even really put in emotions in it. Even if not for that, like to say, be like a child, as an adult, somebody can, you know, do some things react in a certain way you don't even know or understand why are they reacting like that but because you do not have that childlike character within you to give uh, uh, others an opportunity to give others a chance and also to demonstrate the love you change it changes your character changes your behavior changes who you are and then the next thing there are people that you don't like there are people that you don't even want to talk to but the Bible does tell us that we must love like our Heavenly Father does. So now let's look at it. And then it says, at that time, okay, where are we? If anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in, in me, to stumble, it will be better for them to have a large milestone hung around their neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. War to the world because of the things that cause people to stumble. There are things that cause people to stumble. Things like anger. Things like, you know, hate. They can cause you to stumble. You can be praying. You can go to church for years and years. But you, you have anger issues. You are that kind of a person who doesn't like people. You don't, you, you choose. There are certain people that you love. There are those that you don't like. There are things that are in your heart that are heavy in you. You know, but the Bible says that we ought to be pure. We must be free in our hearts. We must be free in our minds. We must love. We must, you know, let's take the scriptures quickly. Woe to the world because of the thing that caused people to stumble. Such things must come. But woe to the person through whom they come. If your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed and crippled than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter with, the, with, the, with one eye 
than to have two eyes and be thrown into the fire of hell. So now you can actually use this scripture anyway. When you talk about it, it's better for you to cut that arm off. It's better for you to remove that eye. It's talking about things that make you sin. Things that make your character change. Things that, you know, that, that, that gives you an opportunity to be an ugly person. You cut those things off. Cut off, you know, sometimes there are even relationships or friends or whatever you can call it that, you know, a part of you you have a certain character or you do things in a certain way you know that this is a bad company you know that these people are, are not good for you but you are part of them why are you part of them and you know that it affects your character it affects how you ought to be it affects your personality to god you can cut it off you know that things that you watch the things that you see the things that you do that are actually you know that they will cause you to stumble but you still do them you know that they affect your character but you still do them when you have to cut it off so it says if there's anything that causes you to stumble or that will cause you to sin or whatever cut it off from your life if you know that this thing is gonna cause your behavior to be in a certain way your character to be in a certain way cut it off you know cut it off if you have issues with somebody you have issues with others then cut off that thing by calling that person sit down with that person talk about those things release yourself you know tell those things out hum humble yourself humble uh, uh, um, your, 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 your behavior your personality you know sit down talk be like a child express yourself release yourself remove all those things imagine you going to pray you are on a prayer and fasting praying to god to bless you with an, a promotion you are praying to god to give you finances you are praying to god to to give you uh, open doors maybe for your ministry for your business or whatever but you have a heavy heart you have somebody that you do not like you have somebody that you are angry with you go to God, you get on your knees with a heavy heart, praying to God. You are praying, God bless me, bless me, but you have a heavy heart. Your character is in a certain way that doesn't please God. So which God are you praying to? And then you wonder why your prayers are not answered. You wonder why certain things are not happening in your life. Why? Because you have a heavy heart. Let's take it further. See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that there are angels in heaven always see the face of my father in heaven. What do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the ninety-nine of the uh, of the hills and go to look for the one that wandered off? And if he finds it truly, I tell you, he is happier about that one sheep than about the ninety-nine that did not wander off. In the same way, your father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should perish. Any of these little ones, God doesn't is not willing that any of these little ones, you can put us like any of us should perish he doesn't want us to perish but there are things that you may do that will cause you to stumble and that will cause you to perish without you even knowing that you are actually perishing you would do wrong things and think and i mean and get away with it, with it and still think that you're doing the right thing you will have a certain character that you know this thing is not good, it's not right. But you're still a child of God, you are praying. And then you still say, ah, God, you know, I love you, I, you love me, you love me. But there are things that you do and think that you get away with them, they will affect you. So there's a way that God wants us to be as his children. If your brother or sister sins, go he says, go and point out their fault just be, just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a, a pagan or a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I truly, truly, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For when two or three are gathered in my name, there I am 
with them. I like this one. says, if your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. He says, if somebody sins against you, approach the person, talk to the person, handle the matter. But what do you do? What do we do? We, we go behind the bake. We gossip about the person. We talk, we say bad, bad things about the, the person. We will, we will vow and do all kinds of things and swear and do all that we can against the person without even them knowing. Sometimes they may even sin against you. They're not, they're not even aware that they're sinning against you. They're not even aware that they made you angry. But because you are not, what does the Bible say? It says call them. Call your brother, call your sister, sit them down, talk to them. If they listen, you have warned them. So there are people that you have issues with. You are saying you're a child of God, but your character is not telling the truth. Within you, you know. You're saying you're a child of God. You worship God, you go to church every day, you pray, but there are people that you are not happy with. There are people that you do not like. There are people that you have got issues with and you are not calling them to sit down with them and resolve the issues. So how then do you have the character of God if you are not doing what the Bible says? We will get to James. You will see what James is saying. So you need to call your brother, call your sister, call whoever you have issues with, resolve the issues. Stop murmuring, stop gossiping, stop talking behind their back. Stop wishing them bad. Stop wishing that they will not make it. Stop wishing that they will not succeed. No, you talk to them, call them, build them, pray with them, you know, help them. Let them see where they are wrong and then let them apologize. And also you accept the apology. You unite to become one and then life goes on. Then in that way, you can go and pray as much as you want to Heavenly Father. He can answer you anytime, anyway. He can answer you. Listen to this. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven uh, times. Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Who can sin against you 77 times? Who? That's to tell you that you must have a big heart. You must have a loving heart. No matter who, say, who does what they can, there's no way they can do it 77 times. Even if they do it more than 77 times, you will still need to forgive them. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he became the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient. He says, be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The seventh master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. He says, he canceled the debt and let him go. But when this, that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what happened, uh, what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant, the servant in, you wicked servant. He said, I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on your fellow servant? Uh, say, uh, uh, sorry, um, just as I have had mercy on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailer, jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Imagine that you are owing somebody, you go and beg, they forgive you. But when it is now your turn, somebody else who is owing you, instead of you doing the same thing, instead you punish them. That is exactly what we do as God's children. Even though we say we are God's children, there are people that, you know, uh, we might be owing for whatever other apologies. We go and beg, we ask, they forgive us. But then when it is your turn, you don't do it. But you say you are a child of God. 
What kind of a child of God are you? Who cannot forgive your sister or your brother? Who cannot forgive your neighbor? Who cannot forgive your spouse? Who cannot forgive your wife? I mean, who cannot forgive your, your, your children? Your relatives, you've got people that you are angry at. Relatives that you don't talk to. Relatives that you say they are witches. Relatives that you say, you know what, I would never talk to this person. You even vow. But your heavenly father forgave you. You gave your life to Christ and said, I'm a Christian. I'm born again. Jesus Christ came. He died for you. Washed away your sins. Today you are born again. You have the boldness to speak about Jesus Christ. But you have people that you do not like. You have people that you hate. You have people that you are angry at. You have people that you don't talk to. But your same heavenly father forgave your sins. When you confess the lordship of Jesus Christ, he said, Lord, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I receive you as my personal servant. He said, come my daughter, come my son, I accept you. I wash away your sins. But you, you cannot forgive other people. You can't forgive. You can't let go. You are not transparent. You can't talk. You can't laugh. But yet your heavenly father loves you. That is why James says that he said, faith without action is dead. And then he also said that you, are, you have the word of God, but you do not do the word. What is the doing part of the word? Let's take James. I hope we are learning something, Royals. I'm also learning something. This is a very uh, powerful topic. Let's look at the book of James. James chapter 1, verse 19 to 26. It's very powerful. Let's look at it. I'm going to take the NIV version. Glory to God. We are learning about the character, you know. We're talking about the character of God. If you say the character of God, then there has to be a change in our life. We need to reshape our lives reshape our character do you know that people who go to church they've got the higher positions but wait until you hear them insulting you and then you wonder is this god james 1 verse 19 to 26 listen listening and doing my dear brothers and sisters take note of this everyone should be quick to listen slow to speak and slow to become angry quick to listen Lord to speak and Lord to become a must be you must be slow to become angry. But you are ever you are angry, you are the first person that people are angry. They they angered me. I'm very angry. You are very fast at talking, you are always ahead and talking, you don't even listen. You are that kind of person who's fast in everything, you judge anytime, anyhow. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak. This is James talking, James 1 verse 19 to 26. And slow to become angry because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. No matter how much you can say, they, they, you can explain your purpose or your reason of being angry. No matter what they have done to you, they may have done it 77 times or even more. He says you forgive you must forgive you can't say you don't know what they did to me i will never forgive then if you say you i will never forgive then i can tell you as you get on is praying that god will bless you god is like i will never also give you that thing why because you need to sort yourself you need to sort your character you need to sort go and sort your issues with your brother Go and sort your issues with your family. Go and sort your issues with your sister. Go and sort your issues with your mother. Go and sort your issues with your father. Go and sort your issues with your granny. Go and sort your issues with your family members. Therefore, get rid of all moral field and the evil that is so, uh, that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you do not merely listen to the word and so receive yourselves do what it says. it says do what the word says don't just receive the word don't just go to church to receive the word oh hallelujah yes i am free from anger but you do not do there's a doing part of it you call your brother you call whoever you sit down you talk to resolve the issues that is the doing part of the word 
Do not merely listen to the word and and so deceive yourself do what it says anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like but whoever whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it not forgetting what they have heard but doing it they will be blessed in what they do those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves and their religion is worthless so you are not different from somebody who is a religion if you do not do the word, you just hear the word, you just practice it in a like religiously, you know, so religiously, then that means you 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 are you are a religion. Your Christianity is the religious one. Because the word of the Christianity is not a religion, it is practical. It is you living the reality of the word of God in your life. You manifesting the power of God, living in the reality of the power of God. You demonstrate the power of God. You demonstrate the character of God. You show off who God is through you. You are a vessel unto honor. You are an instrument of righteousness. Your Christianity is in demonstration. It is practical. It is in doing. You do. You don't just talk. You don't just pray. Just, you don't just declare, confess, affirm. But you do. Do you affirm and do, or you just affirm that I'm a Christian, I'm like this, I'm like that, but you have got people that you are angry at. Let's look at the book of James chapter 3. I want you to show you something. This is something that God wants us to work on. You know, we are getting ready to the new year, right? 2024, and not only just going to the new year we are also getting ready for another level in our lives to grow spiritually to grow physically financially in all areas of our lives and also to live in unity you know one of the things that this program was said during the prayer and uh, uh, and fasting when i was in, in prayer fasting the spirit of god kept on saying restoration unity love restoration unity love that, those words came out a lot restoration unity love and then he spoke about how you how we ought to be you ought to be purified. You, you ought to be clean. You yourself. You yourself, you ought to be clean. You cannot say you want to help others or you want to do this and so on, but you are not clean. You need to, you yourself as a person, you must be clean. James chapter 3. You know, James is very straightforward. James doesn't care. James doesn't joke. He says it as it is. You take it or you leave it. You get angry or you accept the correction or you learn out of it. It is up to you. But James teaches us a certain character. He builds a certain character in us that is godly and that God wants us to have. It says, not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. You who teach, as I am sharing this, you know I'm the one who will be judged more strictly. As I'm sharing the word of God like this, I am sharing it to myself. And as I am sharing it, and the Spirit of God will also be saying, you, are you doing it? You ought to, you have to do it. Because I am the one who's going to be judged even more strictly. But this thing that I'm even sharing now, I will be arrested with my own words. But for me to boldly share it, it's because I trust in my Heavenly Father and I trust myself to do things right. And I trust the Holy Spirit to help me do things right. Because I said, God, use me for your glory. And I am willing to correct myself. I'm willing to be corrected and I'm willing to listen to the Word of God and do things right. And if you are like that, maybe you are also thinking the same like I am. Then do you know what the Spirit of God said? The prayer board that he gave me, then you will pray and declare and declare that you have the mind of Christ. Your, your heart is clean. Your spirit is clean. Your body is clean. Every part of your body, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, it ought to be of the Spirit of God. It ought to be clean. In that way, the Spirit of God will dwell in you. And you know what? He can use you mightily. He can use you mightily. So now let's take it. says we 
we all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouth of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great balls. Consider what a uh, great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and it sets is it says um, is and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have have been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a reckless a restless evil full of deadly poison with the tongue we praise our lord this is james talking listen to this it says with the tongue we praise our lord and father and with it we curse human beings who have been made in god's likeness out of the same mouth come out come praise and cursing my brothers and sisters this should not be can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring my brothers and sisters can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear uh, figs neither can a salt spring produce fresh water that you the same mouth says with the tongue we praise our lord and father and with it we curse human beings with that same mouth you use your same mouth to praise your heavenly father and you use that very same mouth to speak evil of others we use that same mouth to curse other children that were also created like God. God's children for, for God's sake. They are also God's children. We judge them. We conclude that they are in a certain way. We conclude that they are like this. They are not good. They are not good enough. You know? We say all kinds of things to other children. God's children. With our same mouth that we use to praise. And then the Spirit of God is saying, reshape your character reshape your character fix your life fix yourself first how can you use the same mouth to praise god you use that mouth to praise god to worship to pray to ask god for blessings and then you use that same mouth to say who does they what, what do they think they are i will show them i i tell you they will not make i swear you will never make it i swear you will not succeed with the same mouth that you use to praise God, then we are not yet ready to grow Christian, uh, 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 spiritually. We are not ready to even get to heaven. Our character. How is our character like? It says, who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life. You need to show it with your good life. Your life must be good. Your life, you must show it with your good life. By deeds. It says, uh, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. Your deeds as well. Right? But if you harbor bitter, envy, and selfish ambition in your heart, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly and spiritual demonic. For where you have... You have envy and selfish ambition. There you find disorder and every evil practice. Where there's envy, there's jealousy, there's all, all those come. That's where there's evil practice. Forget that you say you are a Christian. I go to church, I pray. You go to church, you pray, but you have got people that you use your same tongue to gossip about, to speak evil of. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure. Then peace loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who saw in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. Are you a peacemaker? Are you a peacemaker? Do you sow in peace? In your church, you have got people that you don't talk to, people that you don't like. And in church, you gossip. In church, imagine if you can do it in church, how much more outside? But you are a child of God. I like this because the Spirit of God is wants to shape us, rechange us. Uh, I mean, re, re, re uh, how can I put this? You know, re, uh, 
rearrange our spiritual lives. There's a way that God wants us to think. There's a way that God wants us to do things. And there's a way that he wants us to behave. There's a certain character that he wants to bring out of us. A character that is of God. So let's take it again. James chapter, where are we? We are in James chapter 3, right? So James is telling us, you're not serious. If we cannot see your deeds, we cannot see you doing that which you say you are, you're not ready. We have been going to church. We say we are Christians. We speak, we pray, we do all sorts. Yet we don't have love. Yet we don't demonstrate love. Yes, yet we are, we are full of bitterness. We have heavy hearts. You don't talk to your mother. You don't talk to your mother-in-law. You don't talk to your brother-in-law. You don't talk to your sister-in-law. You do not talk to your, your, your aunties. You don't talk to, to your relatives, your uncles. But you are a Christian. How are you practicalizing the word? Mark chapter 12. Let's just listen to what the Spirit of God is saying today. He's on us. Let's just listen to him and correct ourselves. Mark chapter 12, 31. He's correcting us. We must listen. <laughs> Glory to God. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Do you love your neighbor as yourself? Or all you're like, hmm, did you see her? Did you see what she was wearing? Did you see how, how she looks? Who does she think she is? She doesn't even have this. She's not even up to that. She's not even like that. We are ever talking. Talking. You are a child of God. First Corinthians. He is on us today. We must work on our character. This thing of us saying we go to church, we go to church, is, and we don't even know the the character that we have is like a waste of time until we fix our characters we work on our characters then god who is is ready to take us to another level as long as you can't fix your character you cannot fix your personality and be in a way that god wants you to be you're not ready if you say you can't forgive you can't talk to the people that you haven't even spoken to in a long time because you quarreled a long time ago you're not ready you have to go and resolve, resolve those issues. You call those people, you sit them down, you sit down, you talk your issues, you resolve each other, hug each other, and love each other again. If you still have got enemies and you're a child of God, you're not ready for the next level. Resolve the issues. These things, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, we're talking about our character, right? There's a certain character that God wants us to have. There's a certain character that God wants us to have. These are the things God has revealed to us. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 10 to 16. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. What we have received is not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God so that we may understand what God has freely given to us. This is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the spirit, explaining spiritual realities with spirit taught words. The person without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are designed only through the spirit. The person with the spirit makes judgments about all things, but such a person is not judged, is subject to merely human judgments. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. He says, but we have. He's saying to us, but we have the mind of Christ. Have you ever asked yourself, how is the mind of Christ? How is the character of Christ? How, how does Christ think? 
How does he behave? How does he judge? How does he handle things? How does he handle situations? There are so many ways, there are so many uh, times, occasions where Jesus Christ was, was, was really provoked. There are so many times where Jesus Christ was tempted. There are so many times where Jesus Christ was tested. There are so many times where Jesus Christ was asked questions just to, to play around with his mind. I like there's a part where he says, I think it's Matthew chapter 9 4. I'll check, I'll check it right now when we get there. He says, Why do you have evil? Why are you having evil thoughts in your mind? But you says we have the mind of Christ. Do you know how the mind of Christ is? Is there any word in the Bible that you read that you hear that Jesus Christ was angry at those that he crucified? He never forgave, forgave, forgave them. Is there where you heard that Jesus retaliated to those that, you know, they angered, uh, who angered him, who did all kinds of things, even those that were not, who never even believed in him, who didn't even believe in what he was doing or what he said? Where did you hear that Jesus Christ quarreled, didn't forgive? There's a woman, that prostitute, that they asked, Jesus, so what do you say about this woman? And then Jesus was busy writing on the, on, 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 on the ground. Looking down, not even looking at them, just to, to tell you that this matter is not, this is nothing. This is nothing. He said, if any of you have never sinned, you know you have never wronged, you never sinned, you can cast a stone to this person, to this lady. Cast a stone on her. By the time Jesus raised up his head, he didn't see anybody. They were all gone. The woman was there, says, woman, your sins are forgiven. Why didn't he say, you, why are you doing it? You, you, I'll never forgive you. Ah, you, you know, he didn't say that. But we, number one to accuse, number one to blame, number one to, to say, you must pay. Number one to say, you know what, I will never forgive you. But it says, 1 Corinthians 2 says that we have the mind of Christ. So what is the mind of Christ? Have you ever asked yourself, well, how is the mind of Christ? How is the mind of Christ? If I say I have the mind of Christ, you confess it to yourself, you say I have the mind of Christ. What is the mind of Christ? Glory to God. What is the mind of Christ? Matthew. Matthew chapter 4. Let's see if we can be able to take all the scriptures. These things God has revealed to us through the spirit of the, uh, for the spirit searches everything, even the, let's see, we are back online. We have to be fast right now. We are back, we are back, we are back. Glory to God. Woo! And this is a very powerful message that we can't miss. Glory to God. All right, let's round our back. There we go. Okay, so we need to be fast right now because I see our network is starting. First Peter chapter 2 verse 21 to 23. We need to be fast right now, royals. And you shall love the Lord. Where are we? Okay, our network, our network, our network. All right, let me try to be very fast right now. Okay, let's see. Let's see how much can we take. But so far, I think we have learned a lot, Royals, on character, right? We are learning a lot. We are learning a lot. So let's see. The network. <laughs> okay, so I think we have to stop here, Royals. We will have to continue again next Sunday. Uh, our network is a little bit uh, shaky. I'm not sure what is the problem. Um, okay, so now we were supposed to continue, right? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more scriptures. But let me just uh, speak some, uh, share some notes. Speak out, tell the truth, stand out for what is right. You know. Okay, so now we're talking about you know how we need to speak out, right? Talk. Say it out. Tell the truth. Just be honest. Talk to those, to whoever that you're angry with. You know, be transparent. Don't sway. Don't wish bad to others. Right? Don't vow. Don't, you know, shout and all those kind of things. No, you need 
to express the love of God, right? Then Jesus was tested in the wilderness, remember? And then the Bible says that uh, we are in him. You know, if you say you are in him, you are in Christ and Christ is in you. But you lie, you speak evil, you claim to be a child of God. Yet you, you, you don't, you know, you pray, you do all kinds of things, but you don't forgive. We need to repent from all those kind, right? And then you need to be purified your spirit, soul and body, royals, every part of your body. You need to be purified, your mind, your spirit, your body, everywhere of you, you must be purified. You can ask God to forgive you from all those things. Ask God for, to forgive you from all the anger, the bitterness, the heavy heart, and all the, the kind of things. You know, change your character, how you behave towards other people. You know, how you behave towards circumstances, situations of life, and so on. When you change that, then make peace with people around you. Make peace with yourself as well. Make, people with those, with, make peace with those that, uh, you know, that hate you. Make peace with them. Okay. And then we have, we're supposed to read Matthew chapter 9 verse 4. Let me call out the scriptures. We're supposed to take Matthew chapter uh, 9 verse 4. And Matthew chapter 9 verse 4 reads, let me see quickly. Let's see, let's see. Okay, so we have Matthew chapter 9 verse 4. We have got 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10. We have got Ephesians chapter 4 verse 23 to 24. And then we have got Philippians chapter 4 verse 7. Colossians chapter 3 verse 9 to 10. Matthew chapter 4 verse 1 to 10. And 1 John chapter 5 verse 20. Okay, so let me just quickly check Matthew chapter 4 before the network cuts us off. Matthew chapter 4 verse, uh, Matthew chapter 9, sorry, Matthew chapter 9 verse 4, Jesus said, and Jesus knowing that thoughts said, wherefore think ye evil in your hearts, why do you have evil thoughts, that's what Jesus talking, said, why are you, you have got evil thoughts, you know, so, these are the disciples, I was talking to the disciples, Okay, so we need to watch over our mouth. So our network is cutting off, right? So now let's look at, uh, okay, let's just conclude. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 23 to 24, Philippians chapter 4 verse 7, Colossians chapter 3 verse 9 to 10, Matthew chapter 4 verse 1 to 10, First John 5 20. So that means you need to change your character. You need to change the way you do things. You need to change the way you judge others. You need to change. If you say you are like your heavenly father, you are created in his own image, then you should love like your heavenly father. Okay, you cannot say I'm, 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 I'm a child of God, I'm of God, I'm like this, but you do not demonstrate it. Just James is saying you need to demonstrate it, right? So that is what we have to learn. So we are, we were praying for the next level in our lives. We're praying for opportunities in our lives. We're praying for more things in our lives, but we don't even do all the things that the Bible says. So you need to reshape your character. Be in a certain way. Be like your heavenly father. Okay? If you say you have the mind of Christ, then find out how is the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is clean. God, Jesus Christ forgives. Jesus Christ is what was, you know, he's the, that kind of person who doesn't hold onto grudges. Doesn't have anger. He's so clean. He's so pure. He has a pure heart. Are you, do you have a pure heart? Do you have a clean mind? Do you have a, 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 a personality that defines who Jesus Christ is? So if you say you are a child of God, but you do not do like a child of God, then you are deceiving yourself. If you say you are a loving person, but we cannot see your love to others, then you are deceiving yourself. You ought to see it. It ought to be seen. It must be demonstrated to others. That way, you can go and pray as much as you want, fast as much as you want. God will answer you anytime, anyhow. But as long as you have got people that you are angry with, you have got people that you don't like, you have got people, people that you have grudges with, you have got aunties that you don't talk to, you have got in-laws that you don't even want to talk to, you have got a mother that you have grudged with, you, don't, you haven't forgiven your mom because of this and that, or your father, or you've got an uncle, or you've got people that you, you hate, or that you gossip about. You speak evil about, you vow and say, you know what, there will never be. Then you are not ready to be a Christian. Unfortunately, even to enter heaven, you're not ready. Until you fix your heart, you fix your mind, you fix yourself, then you are ready for God to listen to you. So you have issues. 
that you need to resolve. Fix your character. Reshape yourself. Reshape your life. Love unconditionally. Demonstrate that love of God to others. And as you do, make sure that you are also receiving that same love. Right? You also make sure. So reshape your character. You cannot be a child of God and you gossip. You cannot be a child of God and you talk evil of other people. You cannot be a child of God and you say, you can't be a child of God and you say, I tell you, I will never forgive that person. Then you are not ready to be forgiven. Jesus Christ himself came for you. God forgave you. And then you, you cannot forgive another person. Who do you think you are? So you have to change your character. Reshape your character. Be in, in a way that God wants you to be. Have respect for people. Have respect for others. Have respect for your heavenly father. You, 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 the people who can even be angry at God, I'm not going to pray. I will not fast. I will not talk to God. I, in fact, I don't even care anymore. I can't even go to church. Why? Because he's not answering my prayers. You're not ready. <laughs> you are not ready to grow. Until you humble yourself. Get on your knees. Approach the door of grace with boldness and confidence and ask for his mercy and let him forgive you and also allow yourself to be corrected and let him correct you put you where he wants you to be you're not ready if the word of god comes to you everything is the word then god is correcting you putting you in place accept it go and resolve issues with whoever you have issues with Go and resolve matters in your family with whoever you have issues with. Go and resolve whatever that you have that you know is making you have a heavy heart. That you know this thing, you know what, if I continue with it, I will not enter heaven. Go and resolve it and say, God, forgive me and I'm going to call my brother. I'm going to call my sister. I'm going to call whoever. We resolve all the matters. We put everything on the table. We resolve it. We make peace and life goes on. Glory to God. So we have to reshape our characters, right? Shape our characters in the word of God. There's no reason. There's no purpose. There's no point for you to be angry, to have a heavy heart, to have people that you don't like, not to forgive. It's a waste of time. And do you know what? The more you do that, the more you sink. It, it is not promoting you at all. So you must let go, right? Forgive, make peace. There's, there's room for restoration. There's room for unity. There's room for love. God loves us all. Glory to God. So if you're watching me and you're not born again, don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I would like you to say this prayer after me and mean it with all your heart. Glory to God. And if maybe all the things that I've shared, you are also experiencing that. And maybe you are the one going through all those things. You are bitter. You are angry. You have a heavy heart because of your parent did this to you or this did it to you. You know, I would like you to take an advantage of this prayer of salvation right now after this forgive let go go and resolve issues with whoever you have with issues with and reshape your character have the mind of christ have the character of christ and be like a heavenly father glory to god say oh lord god i come to you in the name of jesus christ your word says whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved right now i ask jesus to come into my heart and be the Lord of my life from this day. Lord Jesus, I declare that I'm born again. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father, for washing away my sins. I'm a new creation from today. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Congratulations. If you have said this prayer, you are born again. DM us, email us, text us, however you want to communicate with us so that we can help you on a journey of faith. Now that you're born again, send you some scriptures, you know, daily devotions, and so on that can help you on a journey of faith. Glory to God. And also, if maybe you are listening to me or watching or you are like you know what right here i think you just spoke to me listen there's an opportunity there's a chance there's a god god is always looking forward to hear from us and you know what he said by the spirit of god he said i want you to be pure i want your mind to be clean i want your heart to be clean i want your body to be i want you to be clean and pure i want you to be a person of peace i want people to come to you and experience peace experience joy experience love experience you know my atmosphere why because i am in you imagine you carry jesus and you live in in, in hate you carry jesus and your heart is heavy ha no 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 I refuse. You carry Jesus. You, you, you are Jesus in your suit, in your dress. You are Jesus. You represent Jesus. You are saying, I'm the light of the world, but you have got enemies. I'm the light of the world, but you have got people that you don't like. You are not serious. 
that must be changed glory to god so that is not me god is talking to us all glory so let us pray father we thank you for the word that we have received we thank you father for through your word we are sharpened we are shaped in the name of our lord jesus christ we thank you father for shaping our characters thank you for shaping our personalities thank you for teaching us what love is thank you for teaching us what forgiveness is and thank you oh god for teaching us how to be transparent how to be pure how to have a clean mind how to have a clean spirit lord we thank you lord we thank you now that we know that for us yes to receive more blessings in our lives we ought to be free lord we thank you god everything that was heavy in our hearts lord we are set free from it in the name of jesus lord we thank you god that as we resolve issues in our families with our brothers with our sisters with our in-laws with our parents lord we thank you oh god because the peace of god is in charge father we thank you that yes we demonstrate your power we live according to your word we are the doers of your word and yes they will see our your good works in us and glorify you father we thank you for your word that is working and prevailing in our lives we thank you for changing us thank you for shaping us thank you for correcting us through your word we receive it with milkness and gladness and lord we say yes we accept to be corrected we accept to be changed in the name of jesus thank you for your love that is shed abroad in our hearts lord as we go out we demonstrate it and they see that love in the name of jesus lord we thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory to God. I hope you were blessed by the message today, Royals. That was the message that the Spirit of God spoke throughout the whole week. Can you believe it? The whole week. Character. Change your character. Change your personality. Change the way you do things. Change the way you treat people. Change the way you treat others. Change the way you treat yourself. Don't be mean to yourself. Don't hold on to evil. Don't hold on to grudges. You are being mean to yourself. Release yourself from all those things. Glory to God. And be pure. And you know what? God is ready to use you madly when you change your character. Glory to God. That is all for today, Royals. I love you all so dearly. And you know what? When we receive such words, just know that it's not even my mind. God is talking to us all and it is by the Spirit of God. And I can guarantee you our lives will never be the same. Talk about our families. Talk about our spiritual growth. Talk about our businesses, our, our, our careers, our jobs, wherever you are. If you have issues with your boss, go resolve the issues, brah. Because if you don't, you will lose the job. You don't want to lose a job. And if you lose a job, you can't buy bread in the house. So you want to keep your job? Be wise. Be smart. You know what you do? You go resolve the issues. You ask for apology. You resolve with the boss. You get back on track. You work. And then guess what? You will receive promotions. Why? Because you are humble and ready to learn. That is character. Okay? I love you also dearly. God bless you. I'll see you again next Sunday, same time on this platform. Glory to God. Let us go and shape our characters in God. We have the mind of Christ, right? Then let us go and find out what is the mind of Christ in our characters. I love you. God bless you. Like I always tell you every time, stay blessed, stay connected, stay in the word of God. Don't move an inch away from the presence of God. God loves you. And I love you too. God bless you.